Good Sunday morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee along with my colleague John North. John Becker here to talk to easily one of the brightest minds who has ever graced this show. Yes, you're one of them, John. Uh, no, not me. But uh, we are welcoming back to the broadcast Dr. Thomas Zachariah. He is the director of Oak Ridge National Research Lab and he is leaving that post after more than five years at the end of the year and we are pleased to have you with us. And you've left before and come back, so we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but first, Dr. Zachariah, and we do want to talk about your legacy. I just wanted to look ahead in the future uh, because that's what the lab is so good at doing. And what is the one problem you think the scientists and engineers at Oak Ridge National Research Lab will help solve or get close to solving in the next decade? Well, good morning to all of you, and thank you for having me. I think uh, energy transition and transition to a clean energy future is the most compelling challenge that we face. And I'm confident that Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the scientists and engineers who work here, along with the entire community, has an amazing opportunity to tackle that problem over the next 10 years. And when you say energy transition, explain in more detail what that means. What it means is, is that to, to, to actually move towards a a carbon neutral energy production and distribution and consumption. And it's in Tennessee is ideally suited for that because uh, if you get in a nutshell, if you think about all transportation is going to be electric, and I know it's a bold statement, and, and all energy is going to be carbon neutral. Tennessee Valley together with TVA, uh, UT and Oak Ridge National Laboratory has a really important opportunity to tackle that important problem. Dr. Zachariah, let's stay on that topic. It's an encouraging to hear you talk about that because I think all of us would love the idea of getting away from carbon-based sort of power sources. But we're talking about we need better batteries, right? Is that, some, is that a big component of it and a battery that will take us farther than it can right now? It is true. I think, I think the, the challenge with the batteries uh, technology is both um, the fact that we currently use um, mainly lithium ion and uh, lithium um, mostly comes from parts of the world that are not particularly friendly to us and so Oak Ridge National Laboratory together with our partners in universities and other laboratories are working on alternative materials that is more plentiful uh, and that's available uh, in the U.S. and so that's a big part of it. I think if you step back and look at this past year, there has been substantial investments, private investments, in uh, electric vehicle manufacturing as well as battery production in the state of Tennessee to where I expect in the coming year or two, uh, the state of Tennessee will be the lead, uh, leading state for electric vehicle manufacturing. And let me ask you this, do you see boats having that technology very soon? Are we gonna see jet skis with electric batteries? Um, what, what is your thought on that as well? Other things besides just cars and trucks? I think, I think that uh, the battery technology uh, will be much more pervasive uh, across the entire value chain. Um, and, and I think that we will see boats and jet skis that are rechargeable and, and using electric vehicle tech, uh, electric and, and battery technology. Just one last question staying on that topic. As I was thinking today about us talking to you, we all tend to think about our own personal vehicles, but could you clarify for our audience, are you also talking about things like tractor trailers and that form of transportation? Because anybody who gets on a road in East Tennessee, a lot, if not half of what you see is the tractor trailer. Are we talking about that as well? Eventually, yes. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Tesla has their uh, plans for, for long haul trucking, uh, electric, electric tractor trailers. But I think that'll be, that'll come later. Uh, to me, uh, initially, it is going to be uh, automobiles, um, trucks, you know, light duty trucks, and eventually heavy duty trucks. Dr. Zachariah, you talk about the charging elements of this and how do we roll out enough charging stations um, to make that a possibility in the next decade, if you will. Talk about that problem and also the timeline for the solution. Yeah, so, you know, I think um, uh, we have a tendency to look at the world uh, through our lived experience and U.S. as a, as a nation is blessed in that we are a vast country and we 
tend to love our cars and we like our roads and we get an hour, you know, people drive 100 miles to work uh, without thinking uh, twice about it. I think the adoption of electric vehicles is going to be driven uh, not only by the U.S., but the demand side will come from highly populous countries like India, China, Europe, where, where they do not travel as much. And so the question that we have to ask is that in this hugely you know, emerging market, do we want American companies manufacturing in the U.S. and selling to the world, driving innovation and creating jobs in our country? And to me, the answer is yes. And if that is the case, I think that not only do we have to worry about range and range anxiety that we have and the infrastructure that is needed, but we also need to be innovating in, in order to make sure that we are leading uh, um, the world when it comes to these technologies, because I believe economic security is national security. And, and that's a way to assure that the U.S. remains at the forefront. We're going to talk about uh, security, nuclear, supercomputing. Just to put a button on this subject matter, uh, Dr. Zachariah, do you think this is going to be a leap in technology or will it be a, a slow stair step, step method to what, what you're describing? Uh, I, th I, think, I think there is going to be disrupt disruptions in the battery technology. It'll be also, you know, if you think about electric vehicles, it's simplistically, if you think about it as iPhone on wheels, there's going to be a disruption in this area that is much more akin to information technology, which is a much more faster paced disruption than typically we see in the automobile. So even though it'll be natural evolution of progression, but it will be driven at the pace or scale of information technology. Dr. Zachariah, we appreciate it. We're going to come back with you. More of our discussion on supercomputing as well, something that has really exploded exponentially under your leadership at the lab. Back with that right after this.